this is a co-op that we call off-farm storage. And this is a farm that has its own grain bins, or what we call on-farm storage. One of these is going to make us an extra $15 million, and this is what this video is about. By the way, I'd recommend grabbing a pencil and a piece of paper. For us to understand whether on-farm or off-farm storage is better, first we need to learn how farmers make their money and how the co-op makes their money. Farmers get paid when they plant, raise, harvest, and then sell their crops. At the end of the day, farmers have three main goals. Raise high yields, keep expenses low, and sell the crop for as high as possible. Co-ops, on the other hand, get paid when they sell or store grain. This leaves them with three main goals. Buy the grain as cheap as they can, store as much grain as they can, and with that grain that they did buy, sell it for higher than what they paid for it. Now remember, the co-ops are owned by shareholders who are mainly the farmers who use them. And the goal of the co-op is to buy their grain for as low as possible. And the goal of the farmer is to sell their grain for as high as possible. So this creates conflict of interest. So if this conflict of interest exists, why are co-ops a thing? First off, equipment. Despite what we see on most large YouTube farming channels, most farmers do not run semis. They use tractors and wagons so this brings up to our second point. Logistics. A loaded tractor goes 20 miles an hour at terminal velocity. In 99.9999999999% of cases, it's going to be way more time and cost effective to travel five miles instead of 55 miles. Final reason co-ops exist is ease of use. There's virtually zero barriers to entry. Having full access to this place is as simple as giving a name, address, and social security number. No permits, inspections, environmental studies, just got a couple papers and we're good to go. Let's take a look at my family's farm. We raise a thousand acres of soybeans and a thousand acres of corn. Our five-year average for corn is 210 bushels an acre and our five-year average for soybeans is 59 bushels an acre. So this means on a normal year, we raise 210,000 bushels of corn and 59,000 bushels of soybeans. Before we carry on, one last thing. The information we will be using varies from farm to farm. So. I am using the actual financial figures from our farm and I'm using the actual financial figures from the co-op down the road. So when I refer to my farm or the co-op, that's what I'm talking about. And I will also have all the templates to all the calculations I'm using down in the description. So if anyone wants to follow along, please feel free to use them. Let's head to the co-op. First up, we have to figure out how much it's gonna cost to get the grain from the field to the co-op. Tractors, diesel, maintenance, tires, Time. None of that stuff's free. I'm not gonna bore everyone with calculations. I actually have a, a calculator that gives us a pretty close estimate in the description. So for us, it's gonna cost around five and a half cents a bushel or just about $15,000 to get all of our corn and soybeans from the field to the co-op. As we're on our way to the co-op, before we store our grain, it's important to know that the co-op charges fees based off one main criteria. Moisture. The co-op requires that the maximum moisture stored corn can be is 14% and 13% for soybeans. The percentage of moisture simply means how much of the weight of the corn or soybeans is water. So if I was 100 pounds and I had 14 pounds of water in me, I would be 14% moisture. Now here's the scoop. Most of our corn usually comes out of the field at 20% moisture. So this means it has to be dried down six points. The co-op charges four cents per point. So it's gonna cost 24 cents a bushel 210,000 bushels, that's $50,000. This sponge represents corn that's 20% moisture. Once we run it through the dryer, now it's 14%. Remember how we get paid in weight, not in volume? Well, what happens when we take water out of something? It loses weight. So when it comes to corn, we call this phenomenon shrink. The co-op says for every point we dry corn, it loses 1.4% of its weight. This is what we call the shrink factor. Since we're drying six points, that means we lose 8.4% of the corn's weight. At a current market price of $5.74, we're losing just over 48 cents a bushel or about $101,000 on 210,000 bushels of corn just from shrink. Fortunately for our wallets, soybeans get dry enough out in the field where we don't have to run them through the grain dryer. But when it comes to the shrink side of things, the co-op brings them down to 13%. But most of the time, by the time we get them out of the field, they're at 10 to 12%. I've seen beans as low as 9% before. So mother nature takes the shrink before the co-op has the chance to. On top of heat shrink, there's another type of shrink called invisible shrink. The more we handle grain, the more physically broken down it becomes, the lighter it gets, 
the less we get paid. Invisible shrink is really hard to measure, so the co-op just hides it inside of their storage fee. From September to March, the co-op charges five cents per bushel per month, and then from April through August, they charge two and a half cents per bushel per month. Now, we typically start harvesting soybeans the final week of September through the middle of October, and then from the middle of October through the middle of November, we harvest corn. Here's where stuff starts to get a little tricky because we got all the grain in the bins now, but how long are we supposed to store it? My family's goal is to have all of our corn gone by April. So if we start hauling in December, we'll take in 42,000 bushels a month, and this would mean we're paying 27 and a half cents of storage for the corn, or $36,750. When it comes to soybeans, we start hauling in January, and we haul through July. So 8,500 bushels a month, it costs us 36 and a quarter cents per bushel, or $15,650. There are a couple other big players, such as interest on grain inventory and opportunity cost, but those expenses are not directly sent out by the co-op and it's more associated with selling versus storing instead of on-farm versus off-farm. So I'm not gonna be including those in this analysis. Now that we know it's gonna cost $218,815 to take our corn and soybeans to the co-op, Let's check out on-farm storage. Luckily for us, most of our farms are within three miles of the bend site, so we can haul here for 3.9 cents a bushel, or just about $10,000, which is $4,300 cheaper than going to the co-op. Just like the co-op, we have to make sure our grain is dry enough to be stored, but unlike the co-op that dries corn down to 14%, we can dry ours to 15 and a half. So that means we will have to dry four and a half points at three and a half cents per point per bushel, or just about 16 cents a bushel. It costs us $33,000 to dry on the farm. That's a $17,000 savings over the co-op. And that $17,000 is including all the maintenance, ownership, depreciation, everything involved with this dryer. Now granted, it's a $10,000 dryer, but it, we could own a $200,000 dryer and still be cheaper than the co-op. Now not only can we dry significantly cheaper than the co-op, we can also use a smaller shrink factor. Remember the sponge example? The official calculation says that a 15% moisture corn loses 1.76% of its weight for every point that it drops. But that's in a perfect world, which we don't live in, so let's use 1.25%. Remember, the co-op uses 1.4% over six points or an 8.4% weight loss, but we ain't at the co-op. So we can use a 1.25% shrink rate over five points for a 6.25% weight loss. That comes out to 36 cents a bushel instead of the 48 cents a bushel that the co-op charges. That's a $25,000 price difference. Now, unlike the co-op that throws handling shrink into the storage fee, we use things like variable frequency drives, drag conveyors, and belt augers, like the Batco one behind me, to handle our grain as gently as possible. According to studies, grain can lose anywhere from 0.22% of its weight to 1.71% of its weight just from handling. So at a 0.22% loss, that would be $2,600 for corn and $1,600 for soybeans. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest, this seems absolutely crazy to me, but then again, I've never weighed all the dust that comes off our crops. So we're gonna trust the study. When it comes to handling shrink for corn and soybeans, there's only so many precautions we can take, but it's gonna happen. And when it comes to heat shrink through the dryer with corn, not much we can do. But soybeans, on the other hand, there is something we can do. The bin behind me is outfitted with something we call an AGI Sure Track. The AGI Sure Track is a series of sensor cables that hang inside the bin that can measure the temperature and the moisture of the crop inside of it, can track change over time and things. But here's where it gets really cool because there's a weather station on the top of the bin. So it talks to the moisture inside the bin and it says, hey, we're too dry let's automatically kick the fans on on a moist day to blow moist air through our soybeans to rehydrate them and get rid of the shrink. Let's say our beans averaged 11.5% moisture. If we brought them up to 13%, we would be making an extra $13,000 just by blowing some wet air inside of them. And here's the best part. I can control it all from my phone and it's automatic. At the moment, we only have one AGI SureTrack system and it's in this bin, it has corn in there right now. Down the road, we'd like to put them in all of our bins and since we don't have them in all of our bins, especially our soybean bins, I'm not gonna include it in this example, but it's a good point of the what if, because that's some crazy dollars we're leaving behind. As we can tell by our pile of materials, the 290,000 bushel bin site behind me is not quite done yet, but by the time we're all said and done, we'll have a million and a half dollars invested into this, and the co-op would charge a storage fee to cover this, 
We have a Ben payment. Of that $1.5 million, we have a million in equity. And then we went to the Farm Service Agency and got a 12-year, $500,000, 1.75% interest note with a payment of $48,000 a year. That's almost $4,000 cheaper than the storage at the co-op. It's also important to note that we have a couple extra expenses. We need to have the manpower to be loading trucks, moving snow. We have to have the equipment to do all that. We have to have augers, tractors, diesel, electricity, property taxes, because yes, fun fact, those do raise your property taxes, insurance, all that kind of good stuff. As far as manpower and maintenance dollars go, the Ben side costs us $5,000 a year. Then we throw on another $3,200 for insurance and Honestly, when it comes to property taxes, I don't know what I'm paying yet because I haven't got them yet. But using county tax records, I figure it's probably going to be around somewhere in the $8,000 ballpark. So overhead costs are another $16,200. Comparing apples to apples with the co-op from freight, drying, shrink, and storage, we save over $30,000 a year having our own grain bin. If we took that $30,000 savings and invested at a 5% rate of return after 40 years, we'd have an extra $3.8 million. And then remember that 12 years of bin payments we have? Well, guess what? We'll eventually get that paid off. Then we can take that $48,000 and stick it right in our pocket. Now here's where it gets real wild, because believe it or not, all those expense savings I just mentioned aren't even the main reason we have the bins. Those are just fringe benefits. We bought them because they give us options. Has anyone ever gone into a store and seen something for sale, then gone to another store and seen the exact same item for half the price? Well, with grain buyers, it works much the same. Let's hop back to our example of our grain at the co-op. Once we deliver here, we are not allowed to physically touch it again. So that means this is the only store we can shop at, and they just so happen to be a middleman. Has anyone ever heard of someone who flips cars, they buy one for 500 bucks, and they turn around and sell it for 1,000? This is what the co-op does, except with corn and soybeans. Here's how we know this. The Chicago Board of Trade comes out with the market price of corn every day. And then our local buyer, our co-op, they also come out with what they call a cash price. And then our end buyer, which is ADM, an ethanol plant, they also come out with a cash price. So notice how the Chicago Board of Trade is different from these two prices. That difference is what we call the basis. The higher the demand, the tighter the basis, the lower the demand, the wider the basis. Basically, the more we want something, the more we're willing to pay for it, the less we want something the less we're willing to pay for it. Notice how the co-op has a much wider basis than ADM. This is what the co-op does. They buy corn for $5.80 a bushel, and then they turn around and sell it for $6.02 a bushel. And over the course of 2 million bushels, that's an extra $440,000. But keep in mind, about 20 cents per bushel or $400,000 is gonna be eaten up by trucking. Why would the co-op do this? And they have two reasons. The first one is they have contracts they need to fulfill. So they tighten up the basis to try to incentivize farmers to sell them grain. And the second reason is, is a quantity premium because the co-op deals on something called the Board of Trade. So when they come forward with say 200,000 bushels of corn or soybeans, usually they can kind of command a little bit of a price premium because they're bringing forward such a large order. And I know this because we deal on the Board of Trade and we've had 50,000 bushel contracts that we've been able to squeeze an extra penny to an extra eight cents out. Most of the time the co-op's not 22 cents under basis. 30 to 50 cents under for corn and soybeans is way more common. There's a reason why $10 million facilities like the one behind me exist. Up until this point, all the expense side of things is very black and white. It's all based off mathematical formulas. But when we get talking about playing basis, everything becomes very, in other words, Nothing about it's concrete. I would love to have empirical data on exactly how much benefit we get out of playing the marketing games just like the co-op, but I can't because they're always changing. But for a general rule of thumb, we figure after paying the truckers, we can make an extra 20 to 30 cents per bushel or 54 to $80,000 per year playing the exact same marketing games that the co-op does, except at the end of it, we're the ones who get to keep the extra money. I'll be the first to admit, marketing is extremely difficult. I really don't know what I'm doing. That's why we hire it out. I'll include the link in the description to the service we use. They charge two and a half cents per bushel for the volume we go through or it's $6,700 a year. So if anyone's struggling with marketing and want to do what the co-op does, I'd highly recommend giving them a call. Please don't get me wrong. Co-ops are businesses and they deserve to make as much money as they please. But the way I look at it, why should I pay them to be the middleman when I could just take it straight to the end buyer and 
do exactly what they're doing. All in all, when it comes to the expense savings and the extra marketability that having on-farm storage offers us, we can make an extra 34 cents per bushel a year, or just over $90,000 invested at a 5% rate of return. We would have our initial $1.5 million investment paid off in 12 years. So by the time I was 65, if we maintain that 5% rate of return, it's over 50 million dollars. Did I mention that over the next 40 years we can make an extra 15 million dollars by having our own grain here on the farm instead of taking it to the co-op and oh yeah there's also some gravy on top of that because none of this analysis include raising a profitable crop. So that's a bonus. So there we have it. That's all the information. I'm not going to tell anybody what to do. I will have all the calculations down below in the description. So put your numbers in. I'll tell you exactly what to do down there. Find out what your farm would be capable of producing to see if, hey, we'd like to put up a bin or it wouldn't make any sense for us to do. But on our farm, these are our numbers. I hope you guys learned something and I hope everyone is able to follow along. This video took me six days to make, so I'd appreciate some feedback on it. And if there's anything else you'd like me to try to break down like this, I'm all ears. I want to hear about it. We'll see what we can do. But that's all I got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.